There is a hadith in Musnad Ahmad, and there's weakness in the hadith, but our scholars quote it extensively for the purposes of edification. Our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, the Dajjal, the imposter, Messiah, or the Antichrist, will not appear until the people become negligent about talking about him, and until the preachers on the pulpits stop mentioning him. When the preachers stop mentioning the Dajjal in their khutbahs, that is when the imposter Messiah will emerge. When was the last time you heard a khutbah about the imposter Messiah? Well, you're about to hear one, inshallah ta'ala. But why now? Because we do not want to experience that kind of fitna. Even though many aspects of the uh, Dajjalic uh, culture or system, if you will, are already present, we are surrounded by it. He himself has not yet emerged. In a hadith recorded by Imam Ibn Majah, the Prophet وسلم, is reported to have said, لم تكن فتنة في الأرض منذ ذرع الله ذرية آدم أعظم من فتنة التجال وإن الله لم يبعث نبيا إلا حضر أمته التجال أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام, there will never be a more grievous fitna on this earth since the creation of mankind than the fitna of the imposter Messiah. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not raise a prophet except that that prophet warned his ummah about the imposter Messiah. It is sharru fitnatin yuntadhar. It is the most evil of tribulations. So this is serious business. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yata'awwadhu, yata'awwadhu min athabi jahannam wa athabi al-qabr wal masih al-tajjab. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to seek refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala from the punishment of hell and the punishments of the grave and from the imposter Messiah. Of course, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is free from these things, protected from these things, but he's teaching us by example. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the great teacher. The first major sign of the Sa'a after the descent of our master Isa ibn Maryam Alayhi Wasallam, the true Messiah, is the emergence of the imposter Messiah. But even before the coming of the Dajjal, the Prophet Sallallahu informed us of the coming of 30 lesser Dajjalun, all claiming to be prophets, and all of them liars, from Musaylama al kathab to Joseph Smith, to Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, to Elijah Muhammad, to Rashad Khalifa, 30 lesser imposters, all forerunners of the Dajjal proper, at the, at the final pilgrimage, the Hajjatul Wada, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was speaking to 100,000 Sahaba. And he, وسلم, he talked about the most important perennial problems in human society, issues that will continue to challenge the believers until the Sa'a. And so he talked about racism. He talked about the fair treatment of women. And he quoted the ayah, and he said, so that women are not abused. And he described the qualities of the imposter Messiah, Al Masih, Al Dajjal. According to Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet وسلم, then said, Have I not conveyed the message to you? And they, and they re re replied in the affirmative. Thereupon he said, وسلم, Allahumma shahad, Allahumma mashhad, Allahumma ishhad thalathan. Oh Allah, bear witness. Oh Allah, bear witness. Oh Allah, bear witness. There's an extraordinary hadith attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's so relevant, so appropriate for our times. Narrated by Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu anhu in the Sunan of Abu Dawood, he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ سَمِعَ بِالْتَجَّالِ فَلْيَنْأَ عَنْهُ فَوَاللَّهِ إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَأْتِيهِ وَهُوَ يَحْسِبُ أَنَّهُ مُؤْمِنْ فَيَتَّبِعُوهُ مِمَّا يُبْعَثُ بِهِ مِنَ الشُّبُهَاتِ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام عجيب the Prophet وسلم, he said, let him who hears of the Dajjal, the imposter Messiah, keep a distance from him. For I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a man will come to him thinking he is a firm believer and will end up following him because of confused ideas, heretical ideas, heretical matters, shubuhat, roused in him, roused in the believer by the Dajjal. The, the, the Dajjal, not just the actual physical person, but the culture, the system, the zeitgeist of the Dajjal raises shubuhat in the religion, in the deen. It's amazing. In other words, people who identify as Muslim, 
will eventually leave Islam and follow the imposter Messiah because the imposter Messiah will confuse them and cause them to doubt their religion. The imposter Messiah will criticize and raise suspicions about the normative, that is to say traditional prophetic, true Islam. He will redefine Islam, at least attempt to. And we know that if words lose their definitions, <clears throat> then they can mean whatever we want. And this is happening right now. Today there are people who identify as Muslim but oppose things that are ma'lum min ad that are axiomatically known as true in the religion. They think there's nothing wrong with being Muslim and living a homosexual lifestyle or a transgender lifestyle or being pro-abortion or believing in uh, that all white people are born inherently created racist or that there's nothing wrong with believing that the Quran are the words of the Prophet himself, not the words of Allah or that salah and zakah and siyam are optional or that you could be a Muslim moderate alcohol drinker or that you could be a Buddhist Muslim. I heard on the podcast recently, a lady said that she believed that Jesus, peace be upon him, is God. A'udhu billah. And then she said, but I still believe that Jesus said Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jesus is God, but he sent Muhammad. And then the podcaster, the host, he said, yeah, but the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, explicitly rejected the divinity of Isa, alayhi salam. And she said, yeah, he just probably got that part wrong. Confusion upon confusion. Wrapped in a bow of confusion with a cherry confusion on top. Traditionally, da'wah is for non-Muslims and nasiha is for Muslims. But nowadays, as one of my teachers said, now we have to make da'wah to Muslims because many of them, their fundamental aqidah is not sound. 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, there were liberal Muslims. They practiced Islam with a liberal flavor. But today there are Muslims practicing liberalism with a Islamic flavor. I'll give you an example. Recently, a very influential person, a very huge social media following became Muslim. Alhamdulillah, a new Muslim. However, he is a man who is perceived as a threat to feminism, the whole feminist project. And of course, a new Muslim doesn't become a wali of God overnight. The Prophet said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه that none of you become a true believer or complete believer until his hawa, his, his passion, his caprice is in accordance with what I have brought. This is a lifelong struggle. But check this out. There was a Muslim sister who tweeted this was public. She tweeted that if this new convert is welcomed as a Muslim by other Muslims, she will leave Islam. And she said, then I will deal with Allah on the Yom Al-Qiyamah. billahi min shaytan rajim how could she possibly say something like this? Why would, why would someone taking shahada threaten her Islam? The reason is because it seems to me, I hope not, but it seems like her religion is not Islam with a dash of feminism, but it's feminism with a dash of Islam. You know, Hind bint Utbah cannibalized Sayyidina Hamza and Ghazwat Uhud. Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu, one of the most beloved people to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And she came on the day of the conquest of Mecca and she was veiled. And she came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Praise be to the one who made his religion victorious. And he said, Man ant, who are you? And she said, Hind. And he said, Marhaban, welcome to the religion. He didn't turn her away. He has no right to do such a thing. Even he doesn't have a right. The Prophet ﷺ didn't want to see the face of Wahshi because he killed Sayyidina Hamza. But the Prophet never said to him, No, 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 you can keep your shahada. We're cool with your shahada. We don't own this religion. This is our privilege that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us Muslims. We have no say as to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the best of creation, You cannot guide all whom you love, but Allah guides. It is not up to you to guide them. You have no say in this affair. A lot of Muslims in the West are utterly confused. They're confused these confusing times, apparently. Despite the deen being clear, our beliefs are clear. We confuse ourselves and allow ourselves to be confused. The Quran is called Kitabun Mubin, a clarifying book. The Prophet ﷺ in the Quran is called Al Bayyina, clear evidence and nur, light, guidance. Al Haral Bayyim, Al Halalu Bayyin, Al Haramu Bayyin, he said. 
But it, it is this Bajalic culture that has introduced Shubuhat, heaped upon Shubuhat. Americans specifically right now are becoming more and more polarized, more and more disunited. People are gravitating either to the extreme right or to the extreme left. And, and it's a bad sign. And both, uh, so, so we have ultra MAGA on one side and we have ultra woke liberalism on the other side. And both are khulu. La takhlu fi dinikum. The extreme right is saying, no more mosques in America. And the extreme left is saying, more gay mosques in America. Neither group is our ally. I promise you, neither group is our ally. Your only true ally is Allah and the Messenger in the community of believers. Muslims who support the left, they say, well, at least the left tolerates us and respects us. Really? The World Cup exposed all of that. SubhanAllah, a soccer tournament. There were leftists, woke liberals, boycotting the World Cup because the government of Qatar said no rainbow nonsense allowed. Don't mess around up in here. There were liberals screaming and shouting and demanding change in Qatar. Change your society, change your morals, change your beliefs. What arrogance, what happened to respect all cultures? What happened to tolerance? What happened to be kind? What happened to coexistence? It's a sham. When will these liberal colonizers accept that there are other cultures in the world that are not white, that are not Western? When will these Western supremacists and cultural colonizers repent from their hypocrisy and leave the Muslims alone? They want to clash with Muslims. They're going to win many of us over. They want to clash with Islam. They're going to lose. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, لَا يَزَالُ مِنْ أُمَّةِ أُمَّةٌ قَائِمَةٌ بِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ There will always be a group from my ummah who will stand by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want to tell you about what's happening currently right now in Palestine, Israel, so-called Israel. Very interesting developments that we should be aware of. We should be aware of these things. Be spiritually prepared. There are definitely, these are definitely apocalyptic times. Allah and His Messenger have spoken the truth. This religion is haq. The Prophet is haq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al haq. These are times in which deception is everywhere. Shubuhat are everywhere. The Prophet he spoke of these times. If we are not vigilant, the fumes of the culture of the imposter Messiah and his minions will insidiously choke us and our children out of Islam. Na'udhu billah, Allahu musta'an. This is not a joke. The Prophet ﷺ told us to display ifbat, firmness, resoluteness in the face of the imposter Messiah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, idha laqeetun fiyatan fathbutu, wa adhkuru allaha kathira, la'alakum tuflihoon. O you who believe, when you meet a force, be firm, be resolute, and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with much remembrance in order for you to prosper. Wa atiru allaha wa rasulahu, and obey Allah and His Messenger. Wa la tanaza'u fa tafshadu wa tathabari hukum. Uri hukum. And obey Allah and His Messenger, and do not be divided, lest you fail and your power and your confidence depart from you. وَاسْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ And be patient. Allah is with the patient. So right now in so-called Israel, the top, top rabbis, the most respected rabbinical authorities in the world for them are claiming that their long-awaited King Messiah has finally arrived. Top rabbis are claiming that they are in secret counsel with him. This is happening right now. Now this could be yet another false alarm. There have been many messianic claimants in the past. There was a messianic claimant in 17th century Turkey who convinced Jews from all over the world that he was the Messiah and he ended up converting to Islam. But in addition to this, there are five blemish-free, one-year-old red heifers recently arrived in so-called Israel from a ranch in Texas of all places. Blemish-free red heifers means uh, completely red, not a single black or white hair, and never having been yoked before. What is the significance of the blemish-free red heifer? So the blemish-free red heifer, by the way, is the namesake of the second surah of the Qur'an. Al-Baqarah, Baqaratun, Musallamatun, La Shiyata Fiha. 
According to Jewish belief, there have been nine previous perfect red heifers sacrificed in Jewish history. The last one was sacrificed over 2,000 years ago. But then the temple was destroyed by the Romans in 70 of the Common Era. According to the Torah, the water that the priests, the Kohanim uh, of the temple use uh, for their temple rituals, this water must be purified by the ashes of a two-year-old blemish-free red heifer. The ashes of one red heifer can last for hundreds of years. So there are currently five perfect red heifers in so-called Israel. And they're all one year old. If one of them makes them to two years old and is still perfect, then this tenth red heifer in their history will be sacrificed by their king Messiah. And after that, the temple and priesthood can be reestablished in Palestine. And they will push hard to do that. In other words, around December of next year, it is very likely that Israel will announce that their Messiah has arrived. Allahu alam. Now we know that this person, should he emerge, is not the true Messiah. He may not be the Dajjal either. Maybe he's just another false messianic pretender or a forerunner of the Dajjal. The point is he's not the true Messiah. Who is the true Messiah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Behold, the angel said, O Mary, indeed Allah gives you glad tidings of a word from him. He shall be called the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, honorable in this world and in the hereafter among those nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The true Messiah is Isa ibn Maryam alayhim as salam and nobody else. And we know exactly how Isa alayhi salam will make his return to the earth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam explained this to us for our guidance so that we are not deceived. He said sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there's no prophet between him and me, meaning Isa alayhi salam. He will descend to the earth. When you see him, recognize him. فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ فَعْرِفُوهُ A man of medium height, of ruddy complexion, wearing two light yellow garments, looking as if drops of water were falling down from his head, even though it's not wet. Islam. He will fight the people for the cause of Islam. salib. He will break the cross, meaning he will repudiate the belief that he was killed, or that he died as a sin atonement. He will kill the pig. He will affirm the sacred sharia. And he will abolish the jizya. Diplomacy will fail. وَيُهْلِكُ اللَّهُ فِي زَمَانِهِ أَلْمِلَ الْكُلَّهَا إِلَّا الْإِسْلَامِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will perish all religions except Islam during that time. This has already started. All of these other religions are gradually becoming phased out. And there are two reasons for this. Number one, the authorities of these religions are selling out the secular liberalism because they're afraid of being offensive. And number two, higher academic criticism of these religions are causing people to apostatize, which is a sign that they're not the true religion. They're not Deen al haq Just recently, according to a consensus, according to the first time ever, less than half of the UK identify as Christians. First time ever. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَيُهْلِكُ الْمَسِيحَ الدَّجَّالِ And Isa alayhi salam will destroy the Antichrist, the imposter Messiah. فَيَمْكُثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً and then he'll live on the earth, Isa alayhi salam, for 40 years. And then he will die. And the Muslims will pray over him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, also described the imposter Messiah. So that we might recognize him as well and not be deceived. He said sallallahu alayhi salam, shall I tell you of something about the Dajjal that no other prophet told his nation, innahu a'war, that he is one eye. Wa innahu yaji'u ma'ahu. And he said he will bring with him the likeness of paradise and hell. And what he will call paradise will actually be hell. He is one eye, myopic. And this can be both literal and symbolic. When you have one eye, you lose depth perception. If you're a boxer or a martial artist, you know that if one of your eyes closes in a fight, the referee has to stop the fight. Because you can't see the punches coming. You have no depth perception. The message of the imposter Messiah only focuses on what is in front of us. 
the dunya. He is literally the opposite of Isa alayhi salam who said, the similitude of this world is like a man lost at sea who takes hand over fist of seawater into his mouth. The more he drinks, the thirstier he gets and eventually dies from it. The Dajjal teaches humanity that their Jannah is this world and there's nothing beyond this world. He teaches them to engage their shahawat. The Prophet ﷺ said, Hujibatin naru bi shahawat. Hell is veiled by shahawat. The Prophet ﷺ said, The end of time, if the end of time should come upon you and you're planting a tree, finish planting the tree. The point is, we as Muslims give priority to the next life. We will not reap the fruits of that tree in this world, but rather the next world. Now, right now, very powerful people in the dunya are trying to create a new world religion by combining all three Abrahamic religions. This is a major movement right now. The name of this new religion is apparently Abrahamiyya. And it will be an amalgamation of the core principles of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Such syncretism was tried in the past. People, Buru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism, tried to combine Islam and Hinduism. There was a Mughal king in India named Akbar in the 16th century who made this synchronistic religion, Deen Ilahi. It failed miserably. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-yawma akmatu lakum deenakum, atmamtu alikum ni'amati, wa radiyitu lakum an islam adina. This day I've perfected your religion for you, completed my favors upon you, and I've chosen for you, I'm pleased to, to give you Islam as a religion. وَمَا يَبْتَغِي خَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَا فَلَا يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Whoever desires a religion other than Islam, never will it be accepted of him. And he will be in the hereafter among the losers. <clears throat> Islam is deen al-haq. The Qur'an is the muhaymin, the overseer of the previous scriptures. This deen is not the creation of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. This is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an is kalam Allah. No human being is in any position to mix and match Jewish, Christian, and Muslim beliefs. Those who believe and do not clothe their iman with oppression. The Sahaba said, what, is, what does oppression here mean? What does this mean? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna shirk You can't have iman and shirk in the same deen, tawheed and kufr. No human being is in any position to pick and choose which parts of the Quran he wants to believe and reject. There's a very prominent Muslim feminist professor who teaches Muslims in colleges and universities that if the Quran says something that you don't like, something that hurts your feelings, just say no to Allah. Just say no. You know, when I was a kid, my non-Muslim teachers, they taught me that if someone offered me drugs, just say no. Nowadays, we have so-called Muslim professors telling Muslims, just say no to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just say no to the Quran. Some of the mushrikeen came to the Prophet sallallahu and they said, this is a nice Quran, but it needs a few tweaks here and there. Change this and that and we're good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qul, say, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Never will it be for me to change anything for myself. In I only follow what has been revealed to me. I am afraid if I disobey my Lord of the torture of, of a great day. The Prophet ﷺ, he warned us about these types of people. And we should pay attention. The principles and foundations of our theology and morality are clear. We do not allow ourselves, do not allow yourselves to be confused by these Dajjalic agents who introduce these shubuhat. So I don't know, but it seems to me that part of the rationale behind creating this new syncretistic Abrahamic religion in the singular, under the guise of tolerance and unity and kindness, is to convince the Muslims who have already embraced this new religion, that this coming imposter Messiah will be their Messiah. He will be the Messiah of the Abrahamic religion. Allahu alam, Allahu musta'an. In conclusion, how, do, how did the Prophet 
advise us to protect ourselves from the imposter messiah. So in addition to implementing the fara'id, of course, I mean, if Muslims are not praying their five daily prayers, good luck. Bainal kufri wal iman tarkus salat. Non-praying Muslims, these are low-hanging fruit for the Dajjal. A cakewalk, child's play. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he reported the hadith in Sahih Muslim. Man hafidha ashara ayatin min awwal surat al-kahf, usima min al-dajjal. Whoever has memorized the first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kahf is protected from the Dajjal. In another version of Tirmidhi, Man qara'a, man qara'a thalatha ayatin in awal al-Kahf, usima min fitnat al-Dajjal. Whoever just recites three verses from the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf is protected against the Dajjal. Just recite these verses whenever you notice something Dajjalic and, and have an intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from this influence, this insidious influence. It takes 20 seconds. And I'll end with this. He also said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in yakhruj wa ana fikum, fa ana hajijuhu dunakum, wa in yakhruj wa lastu fikum, fa mru'un hajiju nafsihi, aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa sallam. Sahih Muslim. If the imposter Messiah emerges and I am among you, and I will contend with him on your behalf. But if he emerges and I am not among you, then every person must contend for himself. Another way to translate this, if the imposter Messiah emerges and I am in you, فيكم, I am in you, then I will contend with him on your behalf. And one of my teachers said, فيكم means that we have internalized the love of the Prophet Muhammad in our hearts, the reverence of the Prophet Muhammad in our hearts, the beauty and majesty of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In our hearts, the teaching and sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In our hearts, if he is hayyun fi qulubina, then it is as if the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is contending on our behalf. Allahu a'lam aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu huwal ghafurur rahim. Tubu ila Allah ya tawabu alaihi. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله المصطفى وعلى ساداتنا وإمتنا أبي بكر عمر عثمان وعلي رضي الله تعالى تعالى عن أصحاب رسول الله أجمعين <تصفيق> يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد نقول وعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيد محمد وعلى آل سيد محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد نشهد ولا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب جهنم ومن عذاب القبر ومن فتنة المحيا والممات من شر فتنة مسيح الدجال وصلى الله سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين وقيم الصلاة لذكره لذكره